into the thick of it, into the thick of it. I don't know how to do the TikTok dance. Let's get into it. <laughs> hey, 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 guys. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Journey to Purpose with me, Erica Lasan. And I am so stoked for this conversation today, as per usual. But really, because this week we are getting into the thick of it. And when I talk about the thick of it, I'm talking about parenthood, patient parenthood, and um, mom guilt. More specifically, the mom guilt that comes with pursuing a life of purpose and passion, and also the mom guilt that comes with being a full-time stay-at-home parent in addition to being an entrepreneur. Because let me tell you, the juggle is real okay so whether you feel as though this message directly uh, correlates with your life or not if you know of a woman or a mom or a person who is juggling parenthood working from home being home full-time with children or building a business this conversation will help you navigate how to support them and elevate their joy as they pursue a life of purpose you ready to get into it? Let's do it. So this conversation is inspired by something that happened a couple of days ago as I was home with Aria um, and I was doing some work. I was type, 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 typing away, uh, answering emails, and she was doing some schoolwork. Now, as a full-time stay-at-home mom, I do work with Aria because she isn't in school yet. She starts school in August. But while she's home with me, um, she does reading exercises, she does math, she knows how to add, she knows how to subtract. She knows how to do all these amazing things at five years old and it just blows my mind. Um, and I'm really grateful for the opportunity to do that with her. But sometimes when I'm in the middle of working <laughs> and she has questions, I find that I can, um, be a little like, ah, when I'm in the middle of doing something because it can be hard losing your train of thought, especially as a creative when you're like in the flow and you're in the groove of things. You really don't want things breaking your creative process because it can kind of be hard to build that momentum back up. We recently got ABC Mouse and Aria was doing an exercise on the computer that was a little more advanced for her, but she's t she was totally capable of doing it. But I remember hearing noise in the background and for those of you who are stay-at-home parents, you know that noise with the kids around is not new. So I was doing my work and I heard noise, but it didn't register to me that the noise that I was hearing was her calling my name and asking me a question. The thing that kind of broke me out of my flow was her saying, you know what, it's okay, I don't wanna bother you. <sighs> Y'all, as a parent, I was like, in that moment, I stopped it, everything that I was doing. I hit pause on the email that I was sending. And at that moment, I directed all of my energy and all of my attention towards Aria and the question that she had for me. But after going through that exercise with her and spending some more time just like being with her in that moment, I then took a step back to process what even caused her to say that. Because as a parent, that is not something that you ever want to hear your child say. You never want your child or anyone for that matter, especially somebody that you love and somebody that you care for deeply to think that you are too busy to accommodate them in your life. As I took time to rewind <laughs> the um, event in my head, I realized, and I think that this is kind of what caused her to um, say what she said, but I realized that at one point I I let out an exasperated sigh, <laughs> like one of these, <sighs> as she was calling my name. And little did I realize that I had done that subconsciously, not realizing or registering that the noise was me Aria calling me, or at least calling me for something um, that needed immediate attention. Because if we're being real, as a parent, especially as a mother, your name is being called all the time. It's a constant, mommy, 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 ma, mama, mimi, ma, moo. <laughs> it's a constant mom fest um, in terms of just being addressed and the kids asking you for general things, snacks, 
help with something. Oh, mommy, somebody, somebody hit me. You know, you're constantly being called. So when I heard her calling me, I, I just registered it as, again, more background noise. But I think the thing that set her off was the that came with me just trying to focus on what I was doing in the moment. The more I thought about it, I realized that this is something that has been showing up a little bit more than usual, especially in the past, um, where the other day Arya said to me, you don't play with us. Now, for those of you who don't know me, I am a joy strategist, okay? But in addition to this, I'm a creative consultant. Like, I thrive on joy, I thrive on fun, I preach the power of play, and I am all for living a life where you do not feel bound by motherhood or constricted by the fact that you now have the role and responsibility of caring for little people. Play is actually one of the best things that you can do in any of your relationships, whether it is your being a parent, whether it is with your partner, um, whether it is with just like people in the world, play is one of the most powerful things that helps you understand not only what brings you joy, but it also helps you understand what your purpose is while you're here. And let's be clear, okay, I consider myself to be a fun mom, like I'm the cool mom. So when I heard Arya say, you don't play with us anymore, it kind of made me feel like, well, dag. Like, what am I doing? I, and, and if I'm being completely honest, in that moment, I felt mom guilt. I felt as though I was not doing my job or that I wasn't showing up as best as I could or as best as I can for my children. And it, I also felt a twang of, well, if she feels this way, am I practicing what I preach? Like, I preach play. Am I not playing with my kids enough? Um, but then at some point I also like relaxed because I realized that her idea of you don't play with us enough is relative, especially considering the fact that I used to go to the playground with them and I still go to play around with them. I would play um, tag with them all the time. We would do tickle fest. We would do all of these different things, but they're getting a lot older. So now I don't need to entertain them with as much because now that they're at an age of five and three, they play with each other. They entertain each other and we have our moments of play. But at the same time, I'm in a different season of my life as an entrepreneur and a mother. And not to mention the fact that I'm also a full time stay-at-home mom in addition to being a working from home mom who owns a business there are levels to this <laughs> okay i realized that this could be a really impactful conversation to have with all of you who are parents who work from home who are staying home full-time with your kids and who are also in the process of, of building businesses whether you're a parent or not because let's not get it twisted None of this is easy. <laughs> and if it were easy, everyone would be doing it. So first of all, before I dive into the rest of this message, I want to give all of you who are doing the thing a hand clap. And I hope that you guys are patting yourselves on the back as well, because listen, the juggle is real. Okay, the pursuit of purpose and being a parent and pursuing a life of joy is not a conversation that is new to this podcast. I talk about it all the time, mainly because it's my life, but also because I find that there is so much value in encouraging parents to pursue a life of purpose with joy especially with your kids. Because the moment you begin to stop pursuing your purpose because you feel as though you need to place all of your energy and your attention into raising your children, you actually then begin to do not only yourself a disservice, you begin to do your children a disservice and you also begin to do the world a disservice. And that is because you're only offering parts of yourself when you could really be showcasing and illuminating the full glory, wonder, and gift that you are and that you've been created to be by God himself. Aside from that, there are many benefits to living a life of purpose with children. And one of them being that you get to showcase the best of who you are to your children and in a way that doesn't stress you out. Because let me tell you, segmenting yourself aside from your purpose and trying to portray yourself as a certain type of person um, to your children 
puts them in a position of seeing you as something other than human, someone who doesn't have flaws, someone who's always perfect and trying to preach perfection to them when ultimately they're gonna make mistakes. And I'm sure that at some point in your life, you've made mistakes as well. Um, the easiest way to understand how to forgive yourself and also how to utilize the mistakes in your life um, that may have been made at some point in your life is to give yourself grace and take the lessons gained from those mistakes or those experiences. Ah, be a be a be a be. Oh my gosh, why won't it leave me alone? Why won't it leave me alone? Please leave me alone. I don't want to get stung today. Oh my gosh, it's it's not going. It's not going. The bee was terrorizing me. I was going to kill it, but then it flew away. I'm all right. <laughs> so back to this message. It's stressful. It can be very stressful to try to portray something all the time when really if you're embracing who you are and how you are and also the mess that sometimes comes with just living life you're actually able to help people from a space of love when you're giving correction you're also able to come from a place of understanding when you are disciplining your children and you're also able to show your humanity <laughs> to everyone else around you no one is perfect with this you're also also then able to continue your pursuit of purpose and living a joy-filled life throughout the course of your journey because here's what happens when you become a parent or I don't know again maybe this is my personal experience but it's one that I hear a lot from my clients it is one that I hear a lot from people who I speak with about parenthood their fears of parenthood their experiences of parenthood and I know that it's something that I also encountered before becoming a parent which was part of the reason why um, I was a little like nervous you hear about so many people especially women who are transitioning into the role of parenthood having to put parts of themselves Part, some of their hobbies um, and the things that they enjoy doing and a lot of their passion projects on the back burner so that they can be a good parent and or be a good wife because that's also something that happens when you transition into marriage um, and and you are you think that in order to be the best person for the people in your life namely your family you can't be wholly who you are and that is a straight up lie. It's also something that will keep you from living in the fullness of your joy, but it is also something that will rob you and the world of your gifts. It will rob you and the world of the power of your purpose. It will rob you of a part of your journey that is so freeing and liberating um, and transformational for others around you. And all of this said, it can lead to resentment. And that is something that you never wanna experience as a parent, as a partner, or just as a human. <laughs> no one wants to live with regret. And if it is a matter of you putting parts of your purpose on pause or you not pursuing your dreams and your goals to the fullest because you feel as though you need to live for other people. Think about the fact that in a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, maybe even two decades from now or at the end of your life, you don't wanna look back and say, I wish I would have pursued all of the things that I wanted to do, but I couldn't because of so-and-so. At the end of the day, it's not their fault that you didn't pursue your dreams or your goals. The power, the choice was really up to you and you alone. It's up to you and you alone. Are you gonna utilize your gifts and your talents? Are you gonna pursue a life of purpose? Are you gonna continue to pursue your dream? Are you gonna let your current situations and circumstances keep you from doing what God himself has created you to do? When it comes to purpose, I find it so interesting that so many people think they need to discover their purpose. You absolutely do not have to discover your purpose. It may be a matter of rediscovering your purpose because the truth of the matter is purpose is simply being or living or engaging in the thing that you were created and designed to do. You are born with purpose. <laughs> Everyone comes into this world with a mission that they are meant to fulfill. I've spoken extensively on knowing your mission and understanding your life's mission because 
when you have clarity around your mission and you understand the role that it plays in the overall vision of your life, then you wake up every single day on fire with joy and ready to chase the goal. Bringing it on back to the journey to purpose, as much as I champion this message of pursuing passionate parenthood and patient parenthood, I want you guys to understand that it doesn't come without its challenges. I am not someone who believes in making things seem like something that they're not. It's inauthentic. <laughs> it is hard to sustain and it's really difficult to keep up a front. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you that sometimes being an entrepreneur, being a mom, being a full-time stay-at-home home mom that is doing all of these things doesn't come with its challenges because it does. But in the same token, it also comes with so many benefits, so many blessings that it's totally worth the challenges when they do occur. All right. And this is something I speak a lot about in relation to faith and why it's so important to be anchored in your faith whenever you're, you're pursuing anything. Having said all that, I want to speak a little bit on what some of those challenges are. Maybe some of you have experienced them. Maybe you've heard of other people who have experienced them. And then I want to highlight some of some solutions to help you get through some of these challenges when you find that they come up in your life every once in a while. And I also want to talk about some of the blessings. I get to experience our children as they grow up. So I really know them, like really, really know them to the point where I can even understand the different types of cries that they have. I know their personalities. I understand the way they speak and what really makes them tick and motivates them. Our kids get to be involved in the work that I'm doing. As a stay-at-home parent, especially someone who works in the digital space, um, a lot of the work that I do involves working with other entrepreneurs and the creation of content. So I've had opportunities to get paid while being a mom, not only getting paid while being a mom, but getting paid because I am a mom. And let me tell you something, five years ago when I entered this space, I didn't know that that could be a thing, all right? So far, I have worked with my kids in doing campaigns for Origel and working with mom.com. I did a whole campaign a couple of years ago with Baby Catan where I basically got paid to bop around town with my kids and baby carriers. So not only is it awesome to work with our children in this capacity, but it's really cool because it's a really nice way of documenting their growth. <laughs> at some point, they'll be able to look back at their videos and pictures of their lives and say, hey, I was a part of a toothpaste commercial. <laughs> Another cool benefit that comes with working with your children from home is the fact that you get to teach them about your work. And if they're interested, Fingers crossed, maybe someday they will choose to work with you. Even as I'm at home and doing work, whether it's sending out emails, whether it's writing proposals, whether it's sending pitches, whether it's having um, meetings, I explain to our children what it is that is being done. So. As I'm writing a newsletter, I explain what a newsletter is and what it does. As I'm putting together a campaign, I explain how to create a layout. I explain the significance of color. I explain branding. As they see me taking pictures or being on my phone, they understand that I'm not just scrolling for the mere point to be scrolling on Instagram. They understand that all of this is actually encompassing of work. But more than anything, the coolest part about this process is the fact that I get to see which parts of their personality um, lends to the work that is being done, but I also get to experience some of their gifts. Um, it's really cool how even at this age and this stage of their life, so early, at ages five and three, you can already see parts of their personality and how some of their gifts and talents are starting to peek through. Aria is someone who loves to create. She colors a lot, she sings a lot, she dances a lot. She's very interested in videography and photography. And this is something that I started to notice at age three. So at some point, I started to ask her to help me. Sometimes it'd be random photos of landscapes. Sometimes it would be of herself. Um, but 
The point wasn't just for her to take pictures, but to understand why she was taking pictures and making sure that she was developing a skill. So when she takes her photos, we give feedback. We talk about composition, we talk about lines, we talk about color, we talk about angles, and making sure that she isn't just taking pictures for the sake of taking pictures. The point of this is that as you get your children involved, you begin to understand that this, like anything else in life, is a learning opportunity. And it is one that can add value to their life as they, oh, the beer's back. Gosh, why won't this leave me alone? I had to move. I'm hoping that the crosswind will deter any bees. If this bee follows me again, I must be sweet. You understand that you're sowing seeds and value into their life that can be utilized throughout the duration of their life and them understanding how to take on the responsibilities of building a business um, and understanding the value of their gifts and their talents. And you're also, and this is, I feel like every parent's dream, helping them understand what it takes to build a legacy and create something that could potentially be passed down or at least creating something that will allow you additional income so that you can give them a lifestyle with opportunities that you may or may not have had when you yourself were growing up. Entrepreneurship as a parent, especially a parent who works from home, is not a selfish thing. And this personally is a part of my prayer and my why. When I think about the business that I'm building, when I think about the work that I'm doing, or in moments where it gets really tough to the point where I feel like, you know what, this is too much. In those moments, I lean into my faith and trusting that God has place me exactly where it is that he desires for me to be. But I also think about the fact that this work that's being done isn't for me. It's not for me. It's for, for all the people who desire to have a life that's different. It's about building a life of prosperity and joy that not only benefits my home and my children and my future generations and our descendants, but building a life of prosperity that really blesses our communities the communities that we're in and the communities that we serve and that the ripple effect of that love and the planting of those seeds is something that will be felt and ripple out across the cities, the states, um, and the regions where we live. It's really about transforming lives. And understand that the moment you're able to engage with the work that you're doing, the business that you're building with that mindset, you're able to push through because you know that it's bigger than you. You know that it's greater than you. <sighs> There's a whole podcast episode coming up about that at some point too. But for now, something else that gets me through these hard moments where I'm struggling with mom guilt and thinking about how much time I invest in building this business while also being at home, I think about the vision when it's super loud or when my kids are just going like bonkers, jumping on things or making things dirty and it's like, clean that up, do this, do that. I think about the fact that I prayed for this. <laughs> I mean, maybe not all the mess and maybe not all the noise, but at some point in my life before we had kids, I remember thinking, when we do have children, I would love to be able to spend at least the first year with them at home. Because, you know, American healthcare and maternal leave um, <laughs> can sometimes be a little shady when it comes to moms being able to stay with their kids after giving birth. You only get 12 weeks, and that's if you're lucky. How blessed am I that I've been able to stay at home with our children for five years. In addition to this, I'm supported by an amazing spouse. Nick is, he's awesome. I am so blessed to have such a supportive husband who supports my mission, who supports my vision, who supports my passion, who supports my work um, in all the ways that he knows how. And sometimes it's not that he completely understands what it is that I'm doing um, or the intricacies of why, but he is always there to support me. Um, in all of the ways. And I'll be talking about this in future episodes um, and some stuff that comes up and how to navigate through it. So if you're not subscribed to the podcast, please make sure you are because let me tell y'all, there are some really awesome episodes coming down the pipeline. Building a business, being a parent, and being a working from home parent, and being a stay at home parent can be extremely difficult. And a lot of times it is a slow build 
but when you do it slow and steady you're also able to do it in a sustainable way that brings joy amplifies joy elevates joy and sows seeds of joy all around Gosh, this episode is getting really long. But before I go, I want to make sure that I'm sharing some solutions with you guys and some joy gems that I put into play um, and carry with me as I am going through this journey to purpose as a parent and entrepreneur. When I initially became a working from home mom and I became aware of the mom guilt that I was feeling, I began to create some solutions and strategies to help limit those things, even though, again, they occasionally creep up. Um, at least I know how to manage them. So I'm gonna share a couple of them with you now. Um, I became aware of the need for boundaries and keeping it real y'all, a lot of times there are boundaries that need to be implemented in regards to people in your life, maybe friends or family that you've given yourself a lot of access to or given a lot of access to you. And now that you're a parent, you have to switch it up a little bit. Now that you have a business, you don't have as much time to hang out. That is totally a thing. Whether you're a parent, whether you're a business owner or not, boundaries are beautiful things. But recognize this, there will also be times when you need to incorporate boundaries with yourself. Yes, I said it. There will be moments where you will need to incorporate your own boundaries with yourself. This is something that I became very clear of within the past year and a half, especially at the start of the pandemic, where I was working like a crazy woman into the hour, all hours of the night, staying up late, running on three hours of sleep, it was not a good look. Um, and at some point I realized that it was not only impacting and affecting me um, in my ability to do my work and how I felt, but it was affecting my relationships and not in a great way. So incorporating boundaries with yourself and recognizing how you feel and feelings are things that I talk about a lot. So pay attention to your feelings because they matter. They're telling you things um, that you need to be aware of. Uh, so you know, listen. <laughs> Another solution is to make sure that you're getting up and moving your body. Understand if you are burnt out and you continue to push yourself, you're basically pushing yourself for no reason. I mean, yes, technically things will be getting done, but you really got to ask yourself, are they being done in excellence? Are they being done to your highest standard? And odds are, if you are tired, if you are overworked, if you are, I was about to say underslept, but if you're not getting enough sleep, if you are not well nourished, if you are not well rested, if you are not exercising, your work will suffer. <laughs> it may not be very obvious at the beginning, but your work will eventually suffer. So you might as well take care of yourself. And I spoke about that in the last episode. So if you are interested in learning more, you should definitely check that out. Um, make sure that you're incorporating work time cutoffs into the work that you're doing. Um, set boundaries with the time and the amount of time that you're working while you're home. Uh, start at a certain time, end at a certain time. Treat it like a regular workday as though you were working for someone else because you are working for someone. I mean, technically you're working for yourself, but you wouldn't give your boss 80 hours, would you? I mean, some people do. That's a conversation for another day. If you're someone who is working from home with your kids, make sure that you are taking breaks to engage with your children. I feel like this is another conversation that involves a whole other podcast where we can really dive deep and go in. For those of you who are parents who are trying to figure out how to navigate this beautiful dance of working from home while being a parent, I have a couple of resources on my site, ericalassan.com. Um, if you scroll down to the motherhood tab where um, under trainings and programs, you will find a couple of programs that I've created to help you discover how to find balance in working from home and engaging with your children. And lastly, I have one more solution for you all. And I'm, this isn't geared towards you who are listening as parents or the people who are actively doing the work. This one is for all of you who may be here to learn how to support the ones in your life who are parents and entrepreneurs. Don't pass judgment and don't make assumptions. <laughs> this is a solution. It seems very simple, but it's a solution, okay? 
don't assume or pass judgment about how women choose to mother, but instead of passing judgment, ask them if they need help. I wanna share a couple of joy gems with you in the form of scripture. This came from my morning devotional and it ties it up really nicely. It's 1 Peter 4, 12 through 13. And it says, friends, when life gets really difficult, don't jump to the conclusion that God isn't on the job. Instead, be glad that you are in the very thick of what Christ experienced. This is a spiritual refining process with glory just around the corner into the thick of it into the thick of it okay like don't be mad that you're in the thick of it because glory is around the corner but so is a testimony so is learning so is growth and so are results <laughs> and the second verse coming from Romans 8 24 for in this hope we are saved but hope that is seen is no hope at all who hopes for what he already has but if we hope for what we do not have we wait for it patiently so for those of you who are waiting for success, for those of you who are waiting and hoping and trusting in what it is that you're building and the seeds that you are sowing into your life, whether it be with your family, whether it be with your work and the businesses that you're building, um, or whether it just be like where and how you spend your energy and intention, understand that there is value in, in hoping because hope saves, point blank, period. All right, my computer is definitely about to die. So I'm about to end this here. But before we do, I wanna let you guys know if any of you are in need of guidance on your journey to purpose and navigating the juggle, <laughs> AKA the struggle, and rediscovering purpose and navigating the juggle of patient parenthood while working from home, visit my site. Did I shave my armpits? Yeah. <laughs> Visit my site, ericalassan.com, and get started on your journey to purpose with step one, the joy quest. Um, I recently updated the program. It is new, it is improved, it is more interactive and engaging than ever. There are tons of bonuses, and you will have results. Within 45 minutes to an hour, not only will you understand what brings you joy, how to engage with the joy on a regular basis so it becomes a habit, but you will also have a roadmap and a customized system to ensure that you are operating with joy on a daily basis. With your kids or not. Doing all the things or not. Okay, trust me, it's good. That's all I got for you guys today. This is a very long episode, but I am hoping that you gained immense value from it and that you're able to take these lessons and these joy gems um, and incorporate them into your journey to purpose. And also that you share the love with someone who may benefit from the conversation as well. Um, I'd also like to know if you are listening to this and you're a parent or an entrepreneur, what have some of the biggest struggles been that you've encountered? I'd love to hear what some of your challenges have been thus far and how I could potentially help you. So let me know in the comments. If you like this video and this podcast episode, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe both on YouTube if you're watching or on the podcast platform wherever you're listening. And I look forward to chatting with you guys next week. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful week. And remember, we're on this journey together. One feel good thing at a time. Bye. <laughs>